Yellow, I'm Tony Two Shoes, and I'm gonna review these shoes for all of you. I have in my possession the all new Mach 6 from Hoka. Yes, it's pronounced Hoka. If you are looking for a review on a new Hoka, you have stumbled upon the wrong channel. The Mach 6 is a fun, fast, versatile trainer that can take you from zero to 100 real quick. But before we geek out on the tech specs, I want to give some insight on the brand. Hoka, known for their high cushion shoes, is a very young brand. As of this moment, Hoka can't vote, they can't even drive. And like most teenagers, they're kind of funky looking, but somehow they're trendy and influential. Now around 2021, the brand really hit their stride and it seems like the stars aligned. So you had the running boom starting to take off as well as 90s style fashion starting to trend. And part of that trend is uh, platform shoes, high cushion shoes, like skateboard shoe, that kind of thing. Couple that with Hoka doing just a digital dash in their social media, they were able to capitalize and offer a really fun and new experience for runners and walkers alike. Now the feel of a Hoka shoe is certainly unique when you compare it to a more traditional style running shoe. So let's look at the Clifton, arguably their most popular model. And no, I don't have it in all white. What you wanna do is you wanna think of a more minimal style running shoe, yep where the heel is only lifted about four or five millimeters from the ball of the foot. You then add a ton of cushion and a rocker profile and Hocus Pocus. Hoka was also putting out some performance racing shoes that just weren't quite performing the way that Hoka probably wanted. They would put a shoe out, bring it back, kind of tweak it, try it again, try another one, change this, tweak that. The shoes just didn't really stick. Well, recently, Hoka has solidified the racing shoes in their new Cielo line. Now, during all of this, the Mach has been asleep. It may not have been a top of mind model, but it was a very successful shoe. Flea Feet even named the Mach 5 a top trainer in 2023. So it was really just like a quieter shoe. Maybe it just needed a little more marketing. It's like a, like a Boston guy marketing. So if you take their Heritage line and their new Cielo line, combine those two, you have an all new Mach 6. Now I'm going to go in reverse order and start from the bottom and go up to the top because I want to talk about the rubber. So if we look at the previous version in the Mach 5, it almost looks like there is no rubber. But basically what Hoka did is there's two types of foam and this bottom layer is rubberized for durability. But now if we look at the Mach 6, you can clearly see the rubber and it's placed in all the right spots. So durability where it matters. Less is more with this type of shoe. Now the foam, arguably the star of the shoe here, is what Hoka is just calling super critical foam. So that means if you hold the shoe up to your ear, it will tell you your biggest faults. It's very critical. This is as tall as I'm gonna get. Super critical foam, it just refers to the process of how it's made. So whether they use like gas or heat or nerd alert, whatever. But basically it speaks to the innovation of Hoka because it's an EVA blended foam. And a lot of brands are moving away from EVA to other compounds like Piba, stuff like that. So really cool Hoka showing they can do more than just a high cushion shoe. With that said, it's not a soft shoe. I personally don't associate Hoka with like squishy soft anyway, but I actually like a firmer foam. My arches are really flexible, so I like something sturdier under my foot. The problem sometimes with firm foam is that it lacks the response. Well, that is not the case here. The shoe's very snappy, really fun to run in, really responsive, especially when you're picking up the pace. So good stuff here. There is some debate amongst the Fleet Feet review crew, which one is softer, the Mach 5 or the Mach 6? I think the 6 is firmer. Some people feel the 5's firmer. I'm not as familiar with the 5's, so what do you want from me? You know, uh, I'd say after this, go to the Flea Feet site, see what my friends have to say about the Mach 6 also. Stack height on the men's, 37 millimeters at the heel, 32 millimeters at the forefoot. Women's, 35, 30. So you got a drop of five millimeters. So if you're pretty familiar with Hoka, that's basically what all their shoes are as far as the drop goes, but it's not really quite the stack height that we've come to expect, but it makes sense for this type of design. You don't want a ton on your foot. So now we'll talk about the upper. We started from the bottom, now we're here. I don't usually like a blue shoe, but it's got this kind of like wash denim kind of vibe to it. I like it a lot. Hoke is calling this Dusk and Shadow. It's a Creel Jacquard mesh upper. It's very breathable. 
kind of buzzwords nowadays, you know, breathable, mesh, this and that. But with this shoe, it seems like there's a lot of attention to placement of where things are in the shoe and where things aren't. Less is more. There aren't things where you don't need them. All that you need is in here. Sort of a Swiss army shoe. Tongue, very well gusseted, not slipping around at all. As far as the heel goes, very well locked in. I'm very big on having my heel held down. And even with a lightweight neutral shoe like this, Hoka does a very good job at support. So kudos there. As far as the weight goes, men's size 10 is coming in at 8.2 ounces and a women's size eight is coming in at 6.7 ounces. And for $140 out the door, this is a really good shoe that checks a lot of boxes. Now I've been running through the six and I gotta say this shoe is solid. Kind of reminds me of like an old school racing flat but with some new technology and just really good support. If you're building a shoe rotation, this is a really good shoe to add in for track work, intervals, speed work, up tempo runs, cut downs, yada yada, that kind of thing. If you only want one shoe, and you never tried Hoka, and you're pretty quick, this is a really good introduction. And frankly, if you're here for a good time, not a long time, I don't see a reason not to take this to the start line on a half marathon. No, you don't need a plated shoe on race day. Don't plate shame me, all right? Trainers on race day, let's go. Now with all of this information, I still recommend going to a local flea feet Get your foot scanned, talk about your goals, try on some other options, make sure this is the right shoe for you. But for me, I give the Hoka Mach 6 two shoes up. Hoka is like Drake. So when Drake came out, you had a lot of like 90s hip hop heads that weren't into it. He was mixing pop music and R&B, packaging up as rap, they didn't like it. And I feel like a lot of people felt that way about Hoka where they were combining a lot of different elements of shoes into one. So your purists really weren't about it. Personally, much like Drake, when I gave Hoka a try, I was like, oh, okay, I get it. These are pretty dope. And one thing that Drake and Hoka definitely do have in common, they both have a lot of soul. For Fleet Feet, I'm Tony Two Shoes. Shop local, run together. All right, all right, hold on, hold on, don't go anywhere. I have a couple other jokes that I couldn't work into the review. I'm just gonna tell them to you now. <clears throat> yes, I'd like a Mahoka latte. How come you don't like this shoe? Look out, locomotive. Look out, locomotive. Started from the bottom, now we're here. Started from the bottom, now all right, well, focus, Tony, focus. Oh God, please don't fire me.